All right, last week uh, we talked about serving in the church. Uh, this has been, uh, this is the third week of a four-week series on membership. And at the end of this four-week series on membership, uh, if you're not already a member of the church but you would want to be, we've revamped our membership, our membership covenant. Uh, we'll have a new covenant for everybody. And we've got them on the back if you want to see those. And uh, we've been preaching through it. First week was I will protect the unity of my church. If you're going to be a member here, uh, you will protect the unity of this church by like refusing to gossip, by loving each other unconditionally, just by doing what God's called you to do. The second week was serve the ministry of my church. And we talked about being a church that would reach the lost at any cost. We need to be a church that will do whatever it takes to reach uh, Camden and the ends of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can not only be concerned with us, but we have to be concerned with everybody that doesn't know Jesus. I, I don't want to get to, I don't want to get to heaven and Jesus go, well, uh, you know, you did a good job, but there's a whole lot more people that'd be here if you'd have done more. I want to, I want to know that I've done all I can for the glory of God, uh, and when I get to heaven, that He'll be pleased with what I've done. And then this week is as working in the ministry of the church, like. What God's called you to do, who God's called you to be, what gifts and talents that He's given you, how He's blessed you uh, to serve Him. And that's what we're going to talk about. I will serve the ministry of my church uh, this week by talking about your talents, your gifts, loving each other, uh, and just serving each other, serving and doing the things God's called us to do here. Here's the truth. The church is a universal body. But this church is a local body. And if God's called you to be a member here, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that people don't see. A lot of practice. Uh, we practice music on Wednesday nights. We play on Wednesday nights. We practice. We're here at 7.45 in the morning. We practice. We play 8.30 Sunday school preaching and, and just feeding our kids and Mission 615, giving to missions over and over Bible school. I could keep on going with committees and things that are being put together in order to see what the glory of God's going to do here. It won't be long before we'll be in a new building that doesn't look anything like this because our church is going to be so big that we're going to have to have space. So we're putting together building committees right now. We're putting together building funds. We've got architects drawing up different things. And God's just really moving. And when you come in, I, somebody said, how many people do you think will join the church? You know, I don't know how many. I would like to say 50, 100 people. Man, I'd be thankful for two. But what I'm saying is if you join this church, we've got a job for you. Now, here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to force you to do it. We're not going to push you to do it. But little alone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach on being a servant of God. I'm going to teach on servanthood. And we're going to develop a culture of serving here. That way, if you're not serving the Lord, you really feel out of place. Because God has called us all to do something great for His kingdom. Amen. God's never called anybody to sit and soak. That's why the church is in the shape it is today across America is because everybody's went to church, but nobody's been in the church. Let's reverse the role here. Let's do something great for the glory of God. Everybody says, well, what are you going to do in Camden, Tennessee, great for the glory of God? Here's what we're fixing to do. We're fixing to manage from the bottom up, okay? If they don't want to hear us, if they don't know who we are, if they don't want to change anything around here, what we're going to do is we're going to have such a presence in this area that they will have to see the glory of God and lives will change whether they realize it or not. Amen. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times in the kingdom of God, it's those who <coughs> humble themselves will be exalted. From the bottom up, we're going to do things for the glory of God. And like I said, we're not going to force you to serve, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to teach you. This is your gifts. There's many different gifts that the body of Christ has. And whatever gifts you have, then we will enable you to do those things in this place. And if you say, well, I feel like I'm called to serve in this way, but y'all don't have anything in that area, then we will do our best to find a way to enable you here at Missionary Grove to serve God in that area. We will create ministries in order to create, to enable your calling in life because that's what God's done. He's made you. He's won you over with His love. He's saved you. And now He's given you a job to do. In Romans chapter 12, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way we worship Him. Father, help us today to understand truly how to worship You. God, how to truly 
give our lives to You and the calling upon our lives, God, just to pour ourselves off as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. God, help us truly to get rid of serving ourselves to serve You, Jesus. We love You. We just want to do what You want us to do, God. And we want Missionary Grove to be Your kingdom come, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Raise up great soldiers for Your army, God. Raise up great servants for the kingdom here in this place today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Where do you want to serve? You want to serve with adults? You want to serve on the altar team? You want to serve in children's church? You want to serve in visitation as we go out into the community? You want to be in the parking lot opening doors for somebody? You want to be at the welcome center handing out bulletins? Would you like to be serving breakfast downstairs when we all hang out? Would you like to be behind the scenes? Or You know, there's so many places of kingdom service here and it's going to take all of us this is what i'm saying all of you are important you say i don't know what i have to offer you have whatever god's given you to offer. like god has equipped you so many of you with so many things so many of you i've heard i don't know what god wants me to do well i promise you if you stay around here long enough we'll find something for you to do until you figure out what god wants you to do amen like there's so much going on around here so many kingdom things so many people are needed in the work of God. And I want to thank everybody that serves you already, that's, that's all in, both feet in, doing those things. But I want to encourage some of you that are looking at our church, maybe for membership or thinking about joining, that we want you to come in knowing our expectation is that we all discover our gifts and talents and we're used greatly for the Lord. I mean, servanthood is the heart of the Savior. Jesus came to earth because He is a servant. He was and He is. So why should we be servants? Like, why? you know, America is a consuming nation. Um, the reason, I heard T.D. Jakes say this one time, he said the reason our culture is in the shape it is is because everybody consumes but nobody contributes. <coughs> Amen? Amen? Look at our government. Look at the systems. Everybody gets something for free but has to give nothing back to Y'all can get quiet if you want to. It's the church. Mom. Everybody's living off somebody instead of living off hard work on their own hands. I don't have a problem with people who can't work that are disabled, but I do have a problem with people who are freeloaders. God's called us to do great things for His kingdom, and we're going to have to understand that Jesus was a servant. Jesus wasn't walking around saying, look at me. Jesus wasn't the one saying, I'm a king and you're a pauper. He was the one with his hands dirty. He was the one in the places healing the sick. He was the ones holding the hands of the lepers while their hands were falling off because everybody else was saying unclean, but he was touching them so they would be clean again. He was in the middle of the places, the tax collectors and the sinners and the bars and all that stuff that was going on at that time. You think Jesus was hanging out with a bunch of religious people? Jesus had more trouble out of the religious people than he had anywhere else in his life because he was a servant. He didn't come to be served. The, the Scripture very plainly says, Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. He came that he might lay his life down so that you might take your life up. And now, in the world that we live in, Christianity is a fad. It's just a term. If you believe something about something, you can call yourself a Christian. But true True Christians are these living sacrifices, these bodies given to God for the glory of God. If you're going to be Christ-like, you're going to have to do the things that Christ did. Amen. And that's like, ready, here I am, Lord, use me. It's like praying to God like the Son did in the garden before He went to Calvary. He said, not my will, Father, but Yours be done. It was a broken heart and a broken spirit and even a broken body in the end. But He was the one that we always think about when we think about living sacrifices. Christ died for our sin that we might be alive to Him and this is what God finds acceptable. And He has saved us and done all these things. I mean, look at this. He says, I plead with you in verse 1 to give your bodies because of all that God has done for you. How many of you have something that God's done for you? Amen. Amen. Now, if He didn't do nothing but save you, He's done more than you deserve. Yes. Everybody's looking for something, but He's gave me more than I ever need in His Son, Jesus Christ. I'm talking about if I don't get another thing in my life, He's been too good to me. Amen. He's helped me. Man, I just, you don't know where I've been, and, and some of you do. 
But if you'd know where I've been to where I've come to, you'd see that it's only by the hand of God. So I'd be dead. I'd be in prison. I'd be, I'd be in the grave somewhere. I'd be in hell if it wasn't for God's mercy and grace just helping me. I wouldn't even be, a, you know, what the devil wanted to destroy me with when I went through my divorce. If it was up to people, and it was up to the world, I'd be out here doing something else besides standing before you preaching the Word of God because the devil then tried to destroy me. But what the devil meant to destroy me, God meant for the good. Yeah. And He took those things and molded and made me and helped me and gave me a solid rock to stand on. And He changed my path and He established my steps and He made the crooked path straight. So why in the world would I do anything else less with my life than serve Him with all of my ability? Why in the world would I even think about serving myself or, or putting hobbies or putting things before my God if nothing has ever came before me in the kingdom of God? He has been so good to me. That's what Paul says. Because of all He has done for you. If you got right now and you just took out a pencil and a piece of paper like I've got and you started writing down all the blessings, all the times God's done something for you and you didn't even when you were lost. You know God showed you grace when you were lost. Like He didn't let you get killed before you met Him. He didn't let you go down the wrong path. Like God's grace was there long before you even recognized that there's no, no this unconditional love. And now that you've met Him, there's no condemnation. It's like when I talk about this loving God who loves me, no matter what I do, God still loves me because God's love never fails. It never has ever failed me. When my wife didn't love me, my first wife, and when all that was around me, when the house got dark, and when everything was gone, and my kids were nowhere to be found, I knew that God still loved me, and that He wanted me, and that even though I had done many terrible things, God had a plan and a purpose for me to do great things for the Lord, and that's what we are at Missionary Grove. We are people who know we've messed up. We're people who aren't ashamed of our past because we know our past is what makes our future and we're going to serve God and do great things for Him. Amen. Hear me. Hear me. Listen to this. The Apostle Paul couldn't have been the Apostle Paul if he first wouldn't have been Saul who was killing the Christians. Okay? So if you're going to let the past that you have hold you back from getting to the future, that's Satan. That's shame. That's trouble that you're having in your mind. That's not God. Your past doesn't define your future. You in the body of Christ, in the salvation that you have, have been ordained to abundant life. And the Scripture makes it very plain that you've been predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. What Romans chapter 8 says, so you know the truth of God wants to do great things with you no matter where you came from, no matter what you've done, God has a plan for you. You've got to hear me. The devil is using shame Listen to me. The devil tells you you're no good. You've done too much. You've gone too far. And Jesus says, you can't go too far to be out of the reach of my blood. You can't. Listen. The Bible says God's hands and arms are not too short that they can't save. Like you're not over here and God's going, I want to. I want to, but I just... No, He is so much God that He can reach down to wherever you're at and pull you from wherever you've been and take you to wherever you need to go. And I don't know who that's for, but somebody needs to hear that this morning. You need to know that there's no condemnation in Christ. And Christ has called you to a godly life to live for His glory and to do what He's called you to do. And so many of us wasted a bunch of years, but I don't want to waste any more of my life. Life is like a vapor that appears for a little while and vanishes away. And I've only got a little bit of time on this, but I promise you, you look up and it's Sunday, and then it's Wednesday, and then it's Sunday again, and it's all going by, and people are dying and passing away, and everything's going away. Everything that you've got is going away, but serving the Lord will last through all eternity. You've got to hear me this morning. So what are you going to do? You're going to sit back and let the church run itself? You're going to enjoy the spoils of everybody else and then leave and go back to your place. You know they say that 20% of the people in a church do 100% of the work. What if that changed? What if everybody pulled their part 
What if everybody did their thing? What if God was in the midst of this and everybody equally yoked up together did something for the glory of God? How many hundreds of thousands of millions of people could be reached if we were all servants of God and not just life suckers? I've seen so many people come to church and they just suck the life out of people. You know, they don't ever give. They want you to always be there. And they want you to always do this. They won't, they won't, they won't. But they never give back. Jesus never told us just to take. He always always told us to give. In fact, I was reading Proverbs the other day, and it says, those who give generously, get generously. Right. Think about that for a minute. Maybe you're in the place you're at because you've never just, you've always tried to take, but you've never give. Like it's like you say, I don't have any money. You, you, you might not have any money because you won't give any. You're thinking, I've got to have this. I've got to have this. I've got to have this. Well, really, there's some of are hurting and broke and cold and tired and poor and unclothed that don't have any food in their cabinet, and you got some. So give them that money, eat your food, and let God replace what you have with even more of the abundance. Listen to me. If you give, you get. It's a principle of the kingdom. You better listen to me. Like, don't be stingy with the things God, this talent, this body that God's giving you for His glory. Some of you are so smart and so talented and so brilliant. You're so great at this thing. And I'm just this dumb country guy that knows more about farms than he does how to lead anything. This was every day. You know my prayer to God is help me. Help me. Because I know my inadequacy to do what I need to do. But God didn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And if He's called you to something great, just step into it and do it for the glory of God because He is going to provide a way. He's going to provide the ability for you to do what God's called you to do. Quit waiting until you get good enough to do it and just start doing what God's called you to do. you got to know that God loves you and has a great plan for you. And so... This is this church. We want to see everybody reach their full potential in Christ. We want to see everybody doing the work of God. Because that's what verse 1 it says. This is truly the way you worship Him. Did y'all hear me? Y'all kind of quiet today. I don't know. That's not going to keep you from preaching. You know, when, when you get an amen every now and then, they say it's like saying sick and go bulldog, you know. It's just part of it. So, he says, worship me. Amen? Amen. All throughout the... Amen. <laughs> so, he says, worship. Old Testament, New Testament. You can't get away from it, whether it's by yourself or it's corporate worship. Like this morning, we weren't singing songs. We were worshiping God. Amen. Now, we're giving it all to Him. He's our breath. He's our body. Everything we got. He's, he loves us. It was the cross. It wasn't. It wasn't me. It was. He's coming back. It's all about him. But I'm telling you, where the church is missing it, everybody likes to go to church, feel good, and think they're good and worship God. But where you truly worship God is in the everyday trenches, the work God's called you to do. Like anybody can come in here and dance a little bit, but it takes. Listen, taking this from here to the world that we live in and doing something for the great, for the glory of God, that's worship. Every day aligning yourself. Paul said, I've got to die daily. I've got to give up myself. I have got to quit thinking about me. Less about me. John had a real good verse. He said, the more I need to decrease and the more he needs to increase. It's less about me and it's more about him. And I need to worship him. Oh, I love worship. I love to sing. I love to dance. I love, and I really can't dance, but I still love to dance. And I love just to get in the Spirit of God. And I get wound up. Like, I don't even know y'all are out there. Sometimes I'm talking. I don't even know who I'm talking to. I'm just talking to God. It's me and Him. And I'm feeling good. But I've got to move past the, just a feeling to know it's time to put my hands to the plow and get busy for the kingdom of God. Like, come in here and get good. Oh, yeah, and let's go. Praise God. And then go out the door and make a difference and bring some more people in here with you so they can see the glory of God and experience what you're experiencing. Yeah. Like, this kingdom that we're working in, this is not the end all. This is not the end of This is a church building full of church people. But the end is getting people to Christ. It's about touching the poor, the homeless, the helpless, the widows, the orphans. It's about feeding people's bellies and then feed them spiritually. This is not it. This is not all the church is. This is just 
a building and a gathering. But when you jump in, both be here, we are going to send you out to change the world. You know, the disciples, they said that they turned the world upside down for the cause of Christ. Just a few disciples think what Missionary Grove can do into the body here in Camden. All of these things around us. You know, one of the things I see here is if you're not serving God, you really can't worship Him. Lord, help us understand that truth. God, that we would know that you called us to serve you. God, you know we want to be a church that promotes worship, promotes the kingdom. God, we trust you. That everybody here is hearing this word through the power of the Holy Spirit. God, help us to preach in power. In my let everybody here know they hear from you. In Jesus' name. So these things go hand in hand. Servanthood, worship, prayer. Think about Philippians chapter number two. It says that Jesus came from heaven. And it said he thought equality with God nothing to hold on to. You know what that means? That Jesus came from heaven and said, I don't care that I am equal to God. I'm going to go serve some people. Now Jesus left glory. Do y'all know about glory? Like, He left it all. No pain, no sickness, no sorrow, no sadness. And listen, the elders, the, the angels, the created beings all the time, worshiping the Father. He left a place of just sheer glory. I don't even know how else to explain it. It was the best place and will be the best place for all of eternity. But Jesus Himself was willing to step out of heaven to come down to this nasty old earth to help a bunch of rotten people get to the place where they could go back to the place He just left. He didn't think He was too good to come help us. That's right. Come on. Now, why should we just not be the same? I'm not too good. I'm not better than anybody. Listen, everybody out here deserves the same chances I've got in life. They are out here struggling. Why would I not just like Jesus say, I'm going to leave all of this behind and I'm going to go do something. Listen, you know what the Bible said? Here it says, for the, for the glory that was said before Him, He endured the cross despising the shame. What was that glory? He knew He was coming from earth and He was going to go down and get a spotless bride and present Him to the Father. That was His the love of His life. He loved us so much that He was willing to leave all that to come pick us up out of the dirt. And that's what I want Missionary Grove to be. I don't want us to be a church that thinks we're better than anybody. Yeah. And we're not better than anybody. There's no such thing as church clothes. There's no such... Listen to me. If we want to have church on a Thursday and a Tuesday, there's no such thing as church days. Like, whatever it takes to win people to the glory of God. And if things don't look exactly right or sound exactly right or smell exactly right or whatever you think you need your church to be, this is probably not going to be it if it needs to be perfect and prim and proper and everything together and we're not going to go by the bulletin. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a different place, a place of freedom. This is a place where everybody is accepted in the Father and we are going to serve the body, serve each other, and serve the lost. Jesus told us not to be selfish. He said to put other interests before ourselves. We're supposed to have the same attitude, Jesus said, to love God and love others and humble ourselves. If I really get to thinking about myself, how rotten I am, I'll really humble myself. But let me tell you this. Servants get the inside scoop. Okay? I'm just, I'm just telling you. Hear me. Servanthood's where the party's at. Now, you're missing out. Like, I'm not trying to shame you into anything. I'm trying to tell you, this is where it's at in the kingdom. And this is how I know. Jesus, the wedding, the king of Galilee, the first miracle that Jesus ever did. So Jesus and them are at a wedding and they drink all the wine. Everybody's having a good time, but when you run out of wine at a wedding, the good time's fixing to end. So they're at the wedding, and here's the wine, and it all goes away. And Jesus' mother comes to him and says, you've got to get us some more wine. And he goes, Mom, not, the, not now. She said, yes. And he said, yes, yes, Mother. Now any good son's going to do what his mama says, right? So here we go. He goes, 
water to wine. And he just takes pots of water and it's a miracle they turn into the best wine in the house. Not, listen, when Jesus does something, he does it all the way. Amen? Like it wasn't just junk wine, it was the good stuff. So here he is bringing the good stuff and the master of the house at the wedding, he goes, oh my. He said, you saved the good stuff to last. He didn't know where it came from. But the scripture right below that says, but the servants knew where it came from. Hear me? If you're not serving Christ, you're on the outside looking at him. You might know him, but if you're not serving him, there's people that are serving him and they're hearing from him. They're seeing him do things. They're a part of something that you can't be a part of just by sitting in this pew every Sunday and going home. Because them servants knew. They knew they had seen the water turn on. They had seen the miracle. They knew exactly who Jesus was. And they got to see the glory of all the miracles that had went on. That's why I'm telling you, that's where the party is. That you can either sit here and do nothing and just enjoy some of it, or you can get in and get your hands dirty and get the full experience. You get to see what God's doing behind the scenes. You get to be in on ground level. You get to be a part of something like you've never been a part of before. And that's the way we truly serve Him. Like verse number 4 tells us in Romans chapter 12, we all have many parts. We're all special functioning. We're all a part of Christ's body. And we're all made to help each other. It says, in grace God gives us different gifts. What is your gift? Do you all know what your gifts are? Like, have you ever thought about what has God given me to do? What is, what is my My gift is a gift of speaking. Like, like a, a gift of, of words. Like, I, like even before I was saved, I still had my gift. Like I could talk to anybody into anything. But now that I have the Spirit of God, my gift's being used for His glory. And like you've got the same kind of gifts and this is what he's telling you. If you're going to be a part of my kingdom, he says, so if God's given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as he's given you. He said, if you've got a word, say it. God's given it to you. Stand up in faith and proclaim the word. He said, if you've been given the gift of servanthood, serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is encouragement, be encouraging. If your gift is giving, well, I can give generously. Amen. Teach well. Do it good. Don't just do it. Don't do anything halfway. Don't ride the fence. Don't be one foot and one foot in and one foot out. It says do these things well. Give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, then take that responsibility seriously. If God has given you the gift of showing kindness, do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. In verse number 11, this is the verse we all need to hear. And don't be lazy. Yeah. I'm kind of lazy. Every now and then. Don't be amen and stuff like that. <laughs> Y'all got to figure this out. There's times to amen, there's times not to amen. All right? And when I'm lazy, amen. And when I, I've been a bad person, amen. You know, like, you can't, you can't do it. It's, we're going to have a course on when to when. When is the right time to say amen in my next block? No. Never be lazy. Work hard. Serve the Lord enthusiastically. Plain words, amen? You know what laziness is? Taking a break before you've done something to deserve a break. Listen, we're all sitting down taking a break and we've not done anything to deserve one. Like, we've got to go. There's no, there's no days left. Like, if I, if I don't know much about prophecy and end times, but from everything I'm hearing from all those who do know, time's short. Time's short. Like, like it could happen any day. God come back and take us all. There's no time to sit around and be lazy and feed ourselves and, and get fat and build like, you know, the building more barns. I just build bigger barns. And then that night, the, the farmer's life was required. The master's life was required because he was just going to hoard everything and build his barns bigger instead of spreading the wealth out for all to enjoy. Listen to me. It is time to work hard. Work hard hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. I hate a dead church. Yes. Like, why in the world would you want to go to church somewhere and they're like, oh, okay. 
You know, what is enthusiasm? Listen, I know I'm probably a little bit overboard. I get that. But, you know, don't go out and do what I'm doing. I'm just saying be happy in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. God has brought us to this place not to kill us, but to help us. He's given us His presence. And now I can't be lazy. I've got to work hard. I've got to do the God thing. And I've got to do it with a smile on my face with joy in my heart with a mouth that is going to speak good things to be encouraging about. I can't just sit around and say, oh, but if I said this to you, would you believe in God? Oh, so God. <laughs> you know what that You wouldn't do that. I mean, do you really mean it? You know, if what's inside of you is what's supposed to come out of you, yeah. out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, maybe that's as good as you think God is. Oh, God. You know, like when is the church going to come back and be the, listen, we're in charge here. Yes, man. Satan ain't got nothing on us. Right. And we're sitting around letting everybody get down and everybody be beat up and we're worried about Planned Parenthood and all these things that are going on when we are the ones with the victory. Yes. Yeah. Listen to me. We are the ones that have it. We have the Spirit of God. We have a home in heaven. We have the power of God inside of us. What does it mean enthusiastically? You know, talk about it like you mean it, like you believe it, like it's all inside of you. And I understand some people can't, you know, you're not like my personality, but there's a way God's given everybody. And this is not just to one person. This is to all of us. Never be lazy. Always work hard. Always serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. We are going at it. We are going to heaven. Heaven, this is not our home. I'm just here for a little while. It's going to be rough. It's going to be hard. It's going to be good. It's going to be bad. But glory to God, I am leaving this place because my confidence is not in me. It's in the person of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to be patient in trouble. I'm going to keep on praying. And when God's people are in need, I'm going to be ready to help them. I'm always going to practice hospitality. And listen, I like the last one. Live in harmony with each other. Be, don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Amen. Listen, it's time for a different church to emerge. Yes. Amen. It's time for a different church to rise up. One that doesn't think they've got it all figured out. Right. Amen. We just work together for the glory of God and see something that nobody else will see because everybody else has just been with their agenda, with this agenda, with this church, or that church. And God wants a body that will come together across all of those lines and do something great. Yes. And I believe that's what this church is. I believe this church is a church that thinks more about the kingdom of God than they do promoting their own religion and things like that. Hear me. We have to be ready to serve. And I want every one of you to be a member of this church. I would love next week after the service over for all of you to say, yes, God has put me here. But you make sure God's put you here. You make sure the Spirit of God has led you to this place for the glory of God. And when you sign your name on that dotted line, you say in confidence, I know the Holy Spirit has led me to this place and I want to be a member of Missionary Grove Baptist Church. You know when you sign that and turn it in that it's time to go. Yeah. It's time for the glory of God to do something to change this world because it's not going to change itself. Here's what you do. You pray because you know it depends on God. And you work as if it depends on you. Let's pray.